This is the ERP Advisor. Today's episode, ERP Implementation Case Study Series, Recovering from a Failed ERP Implementation. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, ERP Implementation Case Study Series, Recovering from a Failed ERP Implementation. Sean Windle is our speaker for today. Sean is the founder and managing principal of ERP Advisors Group based in Denver, Colorado. Sean has over 25 years of experience in the enterprise software industry, helping hundreds of clients across many industries with selecting and implementing a wide variety of enterprise solutions. His podcast, The ERP Advisor, has dozens of episodes with thousands of downloads and is featured on prominent podcast platforms such as Apple and Spotify. Shop, yeah, Spotify. Shopify. Mixing Shopify, it up. Spotify, Spotify. Yeah. On today's call, Sean will continue our ERP implementation case study series by exploring case studies of clients who came to us after a failed ERP implementation and how we were able to lead them to a successful go live. Welcome, Sean. Thank you, Rebecca. Of Always course. a pleasure to see you. And thank you for everyone who is flexible with us today. I know we normally yeah. do this on Thursdays, and lots of you are regulars to the podcast. So happy to have anybody who could join us for today. Uh, it's been busy season, mm-hmm. hasn't it, Sean? It sure we has. Have lots of things going on. Lots. This is our last installment of this of this series, but I think, yeah. honestly, I think it's one of the most important ones that we're going to be able to tackle, and there was a lot of interest. So Good. I think this will be really good, and a lot of people, unfortunately, go through failed ERP implementations all the time. Well, I mean, I think this is why you especially wanted to do this topic, which I I really appreciate, because it's it's not just like, hey, let's just, you know, do a podcast every week to have content of things to talk about. It's like, no, it's really more about what do people need for help. So right. this is well done to you for planning the series out. So thank you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but we could start off just kind of with a simple question. But why does a successful ERP implementation really matter? Oh, Ooh. I think I was as you were doing the intro, I was thinking about before I did ERP, I don't think I had all these wrinkles <laughs> in my forehead. I look like a Klingon sometimes, I think. I'm a little more uh, aware of stuff. I have a little birthday coming up. So I'm like, okay, is this good? Is this bad? What is this? I think it's okay. Right. But um, the wrinkles are for projects I've been a part of that haven't gone well. Yeah. Thankfully, there's not that many. No. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's a really interesting topic about successful ERP implementations because you think it's not going to fail. Why else mm-hmm. would you do it? Like it's not going to fail um unless bad things happen right right? so um the successful erp implementation i'm trying to think of just some sort of new nuggets that that can help people out I, i think at the end of the day people just assume that the project is going to go well right it's just going to be successful why would it not i paid these implementation teams and this, you know, vendor or the software vendor for the software and like poof magic happens. There it is. It's like going to a restaurant and you order, I don't know, whatever, a burger and the burger comes back. It's cooked well. And, you know, whatever temperature you want and you got the sides and, you know, whatever you like to drink, whatever song, cheeseburger in paradise, you know, there's, I think there's other songs about cheeseburgers. I don't know, but whatever it is that you're looking for, it shows up magically. That's the PMH box we put on a slide that's called poof magic happens and there it is and then you get the you eat it you get the check and you leave that's what we're used to around the world this isn't like just some americanism like expectations for convenience and whatever no it's like that's just what you expect wherever you're at it's so funny because that is exactly what i don't expect with an erp implementation (laughs) i mean we were talking about flying earlier right will who's behind the camera it's always good to see you back there will um he's doing some uh you know some some courses on flying i'm gonna share it if that's okay and you're preparing for like like things to go wrong and if you're prepared they never go wrong right that's we're again we're kind of chatting through that It's sort of the same thing with an ERP implementation. There's so many variables, and we're going to talk about each of those on this call. So stick with us. Well, you got to listen to my high level yap yap for a minute here. Um, But but seriously, like there's the variables. If those variables are um, solved for, Mm -hmm. then the equation of success is 
equals success, right? It's literally like, in my mind, it's like a mathematical equation. I've never said that on a call, but I literally can look at a project and look at the, about the eight different variables that we'll go through. And if one of those is out, oh yeah, well, it's the equation equals false, you know, it's gonna yeah. fail. But if all eight are in and they're at the right amplitude or, or um, volume, we're gonna, we're gonna make it. Um, so the, uh, the key thing is, is you can't just assume you're gonna have a successful ERP implementation, even though you spend the money to get it. It's not like buying a freaking cheeseburger. No, it's not. How's that for an analogy? Does yeah. that make any sense? Okay, good. It's not the same thing. I get, I get what you're saying. And I think even diving into, we've had a lot of work in implementation misconceptions you over bet. the past oh, few months. Yes. And even as somebody who's been around, been in the industry now for two and a half years, almost three years, yeah. some of those were shocking to me where I was like, oh, wait, the partner doesn't do that. That's on the client. And not even as something like that the partner should be doing. There are definitely things that the client needs to be doing, but yeah. just it's not clear. It's not clear when you're going into the project. So yeah. I think this is a really important topic. And that kind of leads into our next question is why do ERP implementations really fail? Um, this gets back to those things that I, I just um, mentioned that I would mention. That I'm going to mention them now. Yeah. So the, the first thing is um, let me think about where to start this actually. I mean, anytime you start something, um, there's always a precursor step. There's always a setup, a step zero, some initiation or whatever that occurs, right? We actually call it zero, zero dot initiate. Mm -hmm. And the, the failures that can happen there are you have the wrong software. You have, yeah. you know, inadequate implementation partner who doesn't know your industry. Mm -hmm. um, and your team isn't, you didn't set the expectation with the time that your team's going to have to put into the project. So like if that's the case, it doesn't matter how the rest of the variables play. If you don't have those three things in, in place, you're just hosed. And unfortunately, that, that does happen, right? I mean, we eliminate the right software and the right implementation partner. And we actually do work with our clients to sort of say, okay, like for real, is your controller really going to have, you know, 30 hours a week to work with the implementation team as the lead PM and as the lead um, architect or, or functional analyst? Yeah, they all are also got a day job where they're already working 50, 60 hours, right? Yep. So, okay, you know, so that's that's the first step is just getting everything structured in terms of resources, the right software, um, and then, you know, going into a plan that can be executed, that's executable, right? So those are kind of the components I put under the first step. Now, the next thing is data, 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 data. Again, I can't say data some more. Data, 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 data. It's just getting a little awkward. I know. Times a million. Exponentially a million. Earth calculators can't fit that many problems of data. To the power of data. Yeah, that's right. Data to the power of data. The data of infinity. It's actually a separate universe called the data universe. It's not the metaverse. It's the dataverse. Anyway, so you've got a plan for your data migration super early. You've got to figure out, like, what is the data that we're really going to bring over? Oh, that's easy. I know all of it. Oh, boy. When I when I hear that from a client, I mean, I, I and again, I'm getting a little jaded as I get more gray hairs. Um, most of my gray hairs are from data projects. Um, <laughs> and I, I just I kind of sit there and I'm like, how much trickery do I want to uh, communicate to this person that's telling me they want to bring over all their data? Like, do I want to be kind of tricky? Do I want to be kind of mean and jab? Or do I want to be cool about it and be like, oh, I understand, da, da, da. Usually I do the trickery part. I'm like, really? You know, well, I want, like, my wife to do every single thing I've ever asked her to do. Or I want, you know, like, whatever. It doesn't happen that way. Like, there's a cost that comes with it. So, of course, people are like, what do you mean? And then within five seconds, they're like, oh, oh my gosh, I, I can't have all of my key people focused on bringing over historical data when we got to get the system set up and tested and trained. Yes, yes, yes. So the data, data, data is definitely the second thing. And I'm not going to spend that much time on each one of these, these variables, but integrations are super vital. Um, you've got to make sure that you understand your new app and what it's going to, how it's going to play or interact or interface basically with the other apps in your mm -hmm. ecosystem and in your customer's ecosystem and in your vendor's ecosystem and in your bank and in your payroll provider, whatever it is. You got to start those early because you're, you're sort of like revving up a 1950s 
Buick or something. I don't know if Buick was around in the 50s, but like you're starting these conversations with outside parties that yeah. may say, oh, yeah, we can do that. Oh, but let me find the right person to help you. Yeah. It's literally like a phone tree at a bank, except it's 10 times worse. Like, you know, you're doing integration with a large bank. It, it can take three months to find the right person to even say, oh, yeah, I can help you with that. Mm-hmm. Okay, where were you three months ago, right? So no, no offense to the banks. So integrations for sure. You really do have to get that started. Um, and then change management, right. not the Cheetos kind of change management. <laughs> You'll have to go back to episode whatever that was on Cheetos to see the inside scoop yeah. on that. But like the real no kidding change management, like, okay, who's impacted? I think it's, what did we say? Who, what, when, and how? Um, who's impacted? When are they impacted? What's gonna, the impact going to be? How are they going to be impacted? And, and just look at it early, right? I mean, it's no different than like, hey, I think I'm going to, uh, you know, redo my kitchen. There's a change management plan that you need with that because the kitchen gets ripped out and you can't cook. You can't use your kitchen anymore. What are you going to do, right? So same thing with the ERP. Like you have to really look at kind of how that's all going to go. So I'll talk about the rest of them as we go forward a little bit more. But those are just some of the key ones that uh, that come to mind. Yeah, and I think I'm going to jump ahead just a little bit sure. on what we had planned because you did mention this already. You need to set your expectations, oh, realistic Lord. expectations yes. in order for the project to go right. So how do you oh. set realistic expectations across all stakeholders? That's a great question. That, that is so phenomenal because success and failure is measured in degrees. Right. It's not measured in zeros and ones. Mm-hmm. Um, if so, if you set the expectation here, and you know you really only have the resources to deliver <laughs> this. Okay. That's just, I don't know, whatever, aberrated, idiotic, whatever it is, right? But you can't see this stuff, so it's hard. It's hard to figure that out. But if you set the expectation here, and you know you can, you know, maybe you can actually do this, there's a little bit of wiggle room in there, right? Right. Set low expectations. And, I mean, I can imagine somebody's listening to this and they're like, but, Sean, like, my boss is telling me the board, da-da-da-da, is saying da-da-da-da. I'm going to really give you guys, like, the truth. They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> so I'm just being totally honest with you. We need a new ERP. Go get one. Yeah. Okay, boss. And then you're like, uh, what in the world does that even mean, right? Oh, it just means a financial system. Okay, well, just a financial system. That runs the whole books and everything else. Okay, well, what about procurement and, you know, uh, procure to pay and, and you know, how does order to cash fit into this and da-da-da-da-da? Oh, we're really just talking about a GL? Okay, great. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, okay, you got it. I'm going to do it, but it's just going to be a new, it's really a new financial app. Like I'm thinking of a client right now. So set that expectation and then just go over here. Don't say, yeah, we're going to change the world. Everything's going to be amazing in phase one. And, you know, it's like basic basics, but the fundamental problem with enterprise software is this. Show it to me. Yeah. Where is it? Touch it. Uh, find it. Where is it in this room? You know, it's not right. I mean, Will's got a machine over there, even there. Show me the enterprise software. Okay, good. He opens up the app and there's the login screen. Okay. Is that really all there is? Because we spent a lot of money for a login screen. No, 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 no. Once you log in, then you go into the app. Okay. Well then where do you really go? Oh, you're at the homepage. (laughs) Well, where do I actually interact with the product? Oh, well, you have to click here, 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 here. And that's where you do your thing. Wow, I had to go all that way. But what about this thing over here and that thing? And then blah, 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 right? There's all of this like metaverse, what do we talk, dataverse. This is like the softwareverse. Um, It's a universe of of this functionality that we just can't see. So that's why you hire a specialist who really knows NetSuite. I know NetSuite inside and out. No, you don't. Nobody knows the whole thing in NetSuite anymore because it's too big. Yes. Not even NetSuite. Yeah. Who's NetSuite? It's a person. And we know exactly the people to talk to who are the experts in each right. area. But somebody who knows the whole thing doesn't exist. Right. So I don't even know where I was ranting and raving about on that. But, but what I'm trying to say is when you understand that from the client side, now you can start setting realistic expectations. We have a large construction company that's implementing a really big construction management solution. We know it's a big app. And so we're telling the vendor, like, you will have 
functional leads from each portion of the application assigned to the project. So the project management person knows the project management, the financials person knows the financials, and then there's an architect who supposedly knows how it all goes together. So you gotta make sure you have those people that that certainly know these different areas. Because there are specialists out there, there are people, but you know, (laughs) here's the other little tip, the smaller your project, the least likely you are to get those really good people. Right. I hate to say it. So, um, you know, but if you work with us, we, we bring this interesting value to our clients and that, you know, we have, I don't know how many, maybe say 10 to 15 implementations going right now. So when we need something, we get it because of the power of, of, of representing multiple clients. Um, but you know, if you're on your own with this, you can still insist on getting better and better and better resources. You have the right to do that and should. Yeah, definitely. And that was a great transition into our next question before we dive into the actual case study, which is what resources can a client utilize to help mitigate the risks associated with an ERP implementation? Yeah. Um, Oh man. I mean, of course us, right? That's, that's obvious. Um, but, um, there's, there's just, it's, it is, it's, I was, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking through about three conversations we've had in just the last couple of days with companies that are either looking at new software, they have problems with their existing software, they're implementing and they have problems. Um, you know, you can go onto Google, you can find, you know, best Acumatica partner, Boston. I don't know. Um, Best Acumatica partner for a uh, pharmaceutical company or, you know, the top in for cloud suite industrial implementer um, process manufacturing, right? You will find them. I know who all these companies are. Um, so so you can search, right? And, and you can certainly call um, the account managers probably who you have at this point. So... You know, the lead software salespeople usually go whoosh, once the deal's closed. Now, the good ones will stick around and help out for sure. But then there's an account management team or account executive or somebody who sort of helps you to sell. You can also reach out to them. Mm-hmm. But um, if I'm, I'm again, I'm being kind of frank today. If they have one or two years of experience, ask them the questions. Right. But then if you don't get a sufficient answer, say, hey, I need you to bring your boss on. Yep. And if the boss doesn't do a good job, say, hey, I need you to bring your boss's boss on. Right. So you find bing, somebody who's been around for a while in that ecosystem and they're like, oh, you got that problem. Oh, yeah. I know these guys over here that can handle that. Right. We have a, a client that's implementing um, a process manufacturer and the implementation has been really, really challenging. And so the client talked to the implementation partner and just said, like, look, I need to find somebody that can basically do what you guys are supposed to do. I'm willing to pay them a little more, but I want them on my side. And there was a guy who was a specialist that they were able to refer in. He's been great. And he's going to get them through a lot of that stuff. So, you know, definitely you have leads and threads to people at the software vendor that you've done business with for sure. And should start with those and sort of work, just be willing to work up the chain to find the right answer. Mm -hmm. You can always reach out to us. I really should say Erica, because she'll get back to you faster. Um, Erica, E-R-I-C-A, like America, um, at ERP Advisors Group. And, and you can just send her a question, literally, and she does this a lot. And it's free at Erica's consulting service, like Lucy from Peanuts, that will put that meme together. Um, so there's those, um, there, are, there are people out there. And then, of course, asking colleagues. And, you know, the tricky part with that is, so you, you have a CFO friend that did an implementation with um, Intact, Last year, you're implement, in, implementing Intact right now in the same industry, and you reach out to that friend. Well, the requirements could be a little bit different, right? But okay, fine. They, they, the, the partner, whoever, even the person that Intact PS or whatever it is that they really liked, reach out to those people. You know, you can put something on LinkedIn and hey, does anybody have any experience working with blah, right? And oh my gosh, you want to talk about like, I got to watch my analogies, but, um, I mean, you will get all kinds of people respond because I see this often where someone will tag me on a, on a request on LinkedIn. And, and I'm like, wow, you got like 50 answers. All 49 of them are wrong. There's one of them that's right. Not not necessarily even mine per se, but at least you get a place to start. Yeah. And those, those ecosystems, all of it's so vast. And it's not as low stakes as ordering a cheeseburger at a restaurant. That's right. That's exactly right. if your right. cheeseburger comes back wrong, you just get to send it back. That's it. You don't get to do that with your ERP. <laughs> yes, but I, 
I, we've even seen that, right? Where some partner, like, it might have been perfect for this retail company, but then they're not as perfect for this one. Yeah. There's always nuances. And, I mean, as we dive into our case study, which is really why we're all here today, so many of you on the call, I'm sure, are here because you're going through failed ERP implementations or you've experienced it, and you're not alone. And it's because of these issues that we're going to be tackling today. And really, it's hard to it find hard. the information that you need, even yeah. if you think you know probably don't know right and, and i mean you know this you've had to go out and research apps and what's yeah. happening with the old apps or the legacy stuff and you know yeah and it's a lot yeah it gives me anxiety and i'm not even doing any <laughs> right, ERP implementation. Right. It gives me anxiety for our clients exactly yeah all right great so let's dive into this case study so it's gonna be a lot so buckle in everybody yeah um, first client scientific measurement device manufacturer with a failed manufacturing erp project so they came to us after a failure of implementation. Why was that happening for them? Um, again, what can I share that's really helpful for everybody out here? They, this is what happened. They were on a legacy manufacturing application mm -hmm. and they had a partner that did a great job of supporting them with that app for many years. And, but the, the vendor decided, eh, we're not going to support it anymore. Mm. So the client's like, well, I don't care as long as I have my partner who's going to help me. Well, then the partner says, yeah, but the app's not getting updated. There could be some security problems. There could be some regulatory things that you're not getting updates on. So you probably ought to switch. And um, we should just, you know, upgrade you or go to this whatever app because mm. that's what the partner does. And why wouldn't you trust the partner? They've been they've yeah. been working with you for a long time. So they attempted that upgrade and it turned out that the partner didn't know the new app as well as he knew the old one, surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. And there were fundamental flaws in the functionality that would not work for their business. And so they had to scrap it after four hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Now, I, we also have companies that have called us that where they've spent four million dollars or sometimes even more. So Relatively speaking, it's a lot, but ugh, it's still, you know, it's more than just a thorn in the toe or something. Yeah. So then they came to us and, and they said, like, we don't know what to do. We don't, we don't, we just have no idea, you know, and we're, we're pretty selective with who we work with in those um, situations, to be totally honest with you. Right. Um, we do a, a quick sort of quick and dirty analysis to sort of say, okay, for real, no kidding. What's the problem? Did you guys not put enough time into this? Yeah. Did the, did the implementation partner just really not understand you? Did the software really not fit your needs? There's a couple other criteria we look at, six total. Um, and we, uh, we understood the situation. The partner didn't really understand the needs and the software vendor couldn't meet their needs. So it's like, okay, you gotta find something else. So took them through a, you know, a detailed um, kind of a process analysis to really understand their detailed requirements, where they're going in the future. Then we did the selection and we did pick an app and then we moved into implementation. The funny thing with this was, oh my God, it wasn't very funny. The same functionality gap they had in the total different other app actually occurred in the new one, even oh. after the selection, even after the demo. Right. The reality was that what they showed, the demonstration was, was faulty. Mm -hmm. They actually showed product that didn't exist. It's very rare that that wow. happens. It was terrible. Yeah, I've never heard of that happening. But we had documented the script. We had documented the results of the demonstration script. We had all the requirements. So when it turned out, oh, by the way, we don't really do that. We were able to say, uh, then you need to do it right now. Yeah. Right. And that was fun. Um, but the vendor did it. They right. built it. So, so we worked kind of through that. But then the next issue became... Um, the client's resources, the team wasn't really bought into the process. Yeah. So I was like, uh, we just fixed like this really big problem and now you don't want to do this. And the partner paid for all that development, which is great. It's yeah. the right thing. Um, and so the project just sort of went, Vroom. I'm like, okay, it drives me crazy. The only thing that keeps me up at night anymore, kids are fine. Eric and I are good. The business is good. You guys are great. It's, pro it's implementation projects that aren't going well, to be totally honest, and data projects. Um, but, but this one was really worrying to me, and the, the client just wasn't making the time to do their part of it. 
So then the client got hit with a cybersecurity attack. Mm. Wham! And the old system is on premise. And so all of their, their hardware is just, it literally is locked up by this ransomware thing, including their old ERP. So they're like, hmm, you know, all the other stuff on our servers, it, it doesn't, it's not, we have backups or whatever. Now, what do we do with this ERP, the, the, the legacy? Do we just, do we rebuild that on a new machine? You know what? We should just go live with the new app. Oh, goodness. So they called me one day and they're like, okay, we're going to go live next week. And I'm like, I love it. Let's go, you know? And so the whoop, they went live and then they got through it. So it's a long story, but it, it does just go to show that, um, it's usually not just the software yeah. or the implementation partner that creates a failed implementation. It can be, but it is also the client side who just doesn't know that they don't know all the stuff right. they have to do. Yeah, and I think a big lesson from that, even as I write these legacy articles and we dive into those things, the upgrade path is never as straightforward as people think that it is. Good point. Even going into the logistics of it, even if you think that the vendor, the vendor released an announcement, and this is no... Nothing against the vendors, even yep. when they do everything that they're supposed to, even when they have an upgrade path that they've specifically defined, there are always, always exceptions to the rule. Yep. And there are always those people that are on custom systems who aren't going to get exactly what they need upgrading right to it. And it might not be the right path for you or your business is evolving too much and the upgrade that is going to happen isn't going to meet the needs that you're going to have in the future. Exactly. So I think that that's a big lesson with this failed implementation is don't always just trust that you need to follow the upgrade path for your legacy system. Yeah. It's not always right. And then it weighs on people mm. going into their next issue that they had. Yeah. Once you've failed twice, you don't want to do it again. Mm. <laughs> no, at that point, you're just like... You're Even just your best getting, people. Getting notepads out and start yeah. writing things down. <laughs> exactly. Even your best people who are behind the company 100% are still going to have fatigue. Exactly. ERP fatigue is a thing. Oh, yeah. All right. So let's go into the next one. Great. A uh, national engineering firm that spent four plus years implementing a professional services ERP to no avail. The project eventually got canceled. Yeah. So yeah. tell me a little bit about those guys. Yeah. So this is, um, uh, yeah, let's go for it. So, so this is on a product that is, um, it's, it's very misunderstood in the market. It, it's like misunderstood. I'm misunderstood. It says Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. I'm misunderstood, okay. and I am. And we're mis we're misunderstood. Um, that is a it is a it's a um, it's a big boy ERP. Yeah. It's not a little one. It's a big one. But is it SAP or Oracle Cloud Fusion or an IFS? Blah blah blah. Nah, it's, mm -hmm. The architecture is a little bit different. But it does take a lot to put that particular product in place. Right. We've selected it. We've had successful implementations. Um, it's it's an app that we look at for a lot of clients. So, but you got to know what you're dealing with, right? It's I mean, it's sort of like um, I don't know. I mean, you know, really exotic cars, right? Some they used. It seems like they used to require a lot of maintenance. Now I don't even know if they do. Mm -hmm. But you kind of got to know what you're buying, right? Yeah. And these guys didn't. They just didn't. They they did a um, a decent selection process. They they narrowed down the the apps and they did select the right app. But they selected the right partner, um, and then they they committed the cardinal ERP sin, the cardinal ERP sin, which is, I want the new app to do basically what my old app did. Yeah, you're leaving the old app. For okay, that so so let's let's just play this out in the relationship world. So. Let's say you're married, and then for whatever reason, that doesn't work out, right? Now you go to the next person, whatever, whatever, right? Male, female, whatever, and you're like, okay, I want you to be exactly like the last one was. <laughs> Why'd you leave Boyfriend, the last one? girlfriend, I don't know, exactly. Why did you leave? Why did they leave? Don't do that. Don't, 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 don't rebuild what you have, and, and it's, it's it, there's a there's a little bit of naivety here, um, but but if you do a search on why ERP implementations fail, right? I mean, you're listening to this. You there's so much about don't over customize the app, right? And so if you had an app like these guys did for I don't know, 10, 15 years that they built out, they had a person that they probably spent you know fully loaded costs, say a couple hundred thousand dollars over 15 years building out this custom stuff, right? That's a huge investment. It it's a yeah. lot of money. 
And we're going to get that on day one with the new product, right? Oh, come on. Like, don't, don't think that anymore. You don't have to think that. There's other problems you can create for yourself. Don't create that one. Right. But, um, but anyway, so then they start doing the project. Oh, we needed to do this, 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 this. And the partner's a little bit like, oh, we're getting a little worried here. And yeah. the partner speaks out and says, hey, you're making a mistake by doing this. You're not, you're going to regret this, da, 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 da. And then it's like, okay, we'll get that guy off the project. <laughs> <laughs> the whistleblower. <Yes>. Um, <laughs> great. Um, so then, you know, week after week, month after month, they're trying to find what is the right compromise between configuration, customization, out of the box. And, um, you know, companies go about these implementations as if they uh, really know what they're doing. Okay. Now, the people who've made it 30 minutes into this video, you guys, I trust, to be totally honest with you, because we've been flapping the jaws, and if you've made it this far and haven't fallen asleep, then you this is really important to you. I, I trust you because you're doing your diligence. Yeah. And and unfortunately, a lot of people don't. So then they, they're just naive about the whole process. But I paid the vendor, and it should work, and I paid all this money for the software, and it should work. Okay, but you told them to do a bunch of stuff that the app doesn't do. Well, of course I did. That's how my business works. And then we usually just go like, oh, oh, look at the time. I got I to gotta run, you know. <laughs> but for this particular company, um, we really liked the leadership a lot. And, and the project team a lot. These are great people right. and they really, they really wanted help. They needed help. It was a great implementation partner. We sort of did a quick um, implementation readiness assessment and mm -hmm. you know, we looked across the board and we're like, okay, all the key components, those eight things I mentioned earlier that I only covered four, they're all there. Right. They're there um, except for organizing correctly mm -hmm. and setting the correct expectation. And we can help do that, which is basically group of expectation, right. but then organize to say, test, train, launch. So when you test it, because they had had four years of development and everything else, test the heck out of it. And unless you really, really, really need something, you ain't getting it. Like, yeah. is this going to work or not? We just had a meeting recently where it was like, everybody said it's going to work. Then train, 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 train the heck out of everybody. It's a thousand person um, firm. Um, everybody's life's going to be impacted by this. Um, so we got to make sure that they can learn it now, go ahead and launch with the data and everything else that goes with it. So, um, you know, what, what would I have told them differently at the beginning if we were advising them? Um, we probably would have just said, lower the expectation. Right. And um, you're not going to get your 20 year old software in the first phase with the new one. Mm -hmm. But here's the minimum viable product of requirements that will get delivered on day one. Right. And here's what the roadmap looks like to continue. And, and you can do it. You know, this is this is really doable stuff. Right. We need to get MVP shirts. We do. Except for minimum viable product. instead. Yeah. What, what is it? What's the shirt saying now with the, the little icon? I think that was in a deck. No customizations on the front, MVP on the back. Yeah, there I you love go. that. We need our ERP shirts that we won't do. make sense to well, anybody, especially because in the summer I'm not wearing those the our ERP advisor socks because oh, yeah, they're hot. too hot. So, but I'd wear a t-shirt. Yeah, we could wear t-shirts. I could have another dorky shirt because I definitely have a shirt from my, my time at conferences. That says, yes. is, your, is it time for you to upgrade your AP software? And I have people who are like, what does that mean? And I have to like tell them. <laughs> so now I can have other things that I walk around there in that only go. make sense to software professionals. But, exactly. Uh, MVP, what are, you, are you like the most valuable player, Rebecca? Yeah. How could you say that? No. no. Well, yes. Yeah, exactly. But, Where to my soccer games, see what happens. Exactly. <sighs> you know, if you need a sponsor, I'm in. Yeah. You tell me. Let's do it. Sponsor Jerseys. fueled by ERP. Fueled MVP. by ERP. No customizations uh, on the field. <laughs> there, but yeah, going back to this client, I mean, they're definitely. It's a common story that we hear from a lot of people. It is. So I mean, so many companies are coming off their legacy software, and I get it. Like, yep. you, there's things that work that you think you want to keep, but uh, right. great lessons from that one. Next client. This I feel like this poor client <laughs> has been through everything. And it'll sound familiar when I do the description to anybody who's been following this series. But this is a thousand plus field service company or a thousand field service company, M and A roll up that acquired an ERP that they were unable to implement. Yep. Let's remind everybody about 
the turmoil that this poor client has oh, gone through. These poor guys, and they're great too. Just it, it just it's just sad. You have such great people that have to go through right. these nightmares. Um, th- and this this one sort of dovetails also into kind of private equity strategies as yeah. well. So it's it's pretty interesting. I wish I, I wish I could say this more interesting for you guys. Is it I always look at Will. I'm like, "Well, you, you got to like tell me like, John, this is very boring." <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um it, like it like like the private equity strategy, mm-hmm. okay, is usually it's to go buy a platform business, like buy one business that's in pretty good shape, pretty good leadership. That's really what it's about, right? Get some good systems in place and then either buy businesses that do the same thing and layer in their customers and their vendors. And some of the people, some of the other people maybe get jettisoned, right? Mm -hmm. Duplicative roles, all that stuff. And I wouldn't, I was about to say, or, but anymore it's end by adjacent businesses and bring, put them together. So, you know, so you're servicing. Um, uh, well, we just talked to another uh, company recently. That's this. That they're a specialty, basically a specialty construction company for utilities. Mm-hmm. So transmission lines, distribution plants, all this stuff is what these guys help build, right? Well, for them, they can go and buy, and these guys did this, they can go buy similar businesses that are maybe in different geographies. Mm-hmm. So there's there's a little bit of overlap, but there's also some new stuff, right? Or they could go buy a company that does the exact same thing for oil and gas, mm-hmm. because it's similar if you look at like over in, here in Denver, in Commerce City, when you look at, um, you know, those plants, have you guys mm-hmm. seen that when you drive by on 76, there's a it's a it's called midstream it's a it's a gas processing plant right that's a little bit similar to utilities but kind of not really yeah. but anyway that's the idea like oh it's similar but it you know we can leverage our people a little bit and our know-how but for a different vertical that, or industry yeah. we can go sell to okay good benchmarking at its finest sure so so you so you get like that platform which is what these guys were then they boop, 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 bring all these businesses and then they went out and purchased a just find um financials application they really said we need an erp so they went out and bought one which is fine we did the analysis mm-hmm. like that's what works but for what yeah what do you want to use it for well, we want to run all this stuff. We're like, oh no, that's not going to work. Like you yeah. have, you have such now it actually that's we'd be in better position, but back then they didn't really have as deep a field services and some other stuff. So, um, so, so we sort of help them figure out like what app to use for what function, not only for the business as it was today, but for what their ongoing strategy was as they layer in these other businesses, you right. know, and um, and as we're going and and, and with this one we've talked about this a little bit, like you said, but we also were really driving towards a best of breed solution Mm -hmm. where it was a lot of really great software, but then it all had to interact and interface, which you'd think all those problems have been solved, but they have not, 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 not. So there's problems there. But then also when you have more of a best of breed, sort of a next generation solution, you have to have people that understand this stuff. Right. And not only do you have to have those people but you also have to have availability, their time where they can focus mm-hmm. on the project. And unfortunately, especially in this private equity world where they're buying and selling businesses, the same people that are involved in those transactions are usually the ones involved in the implementation because they're your yeah. best people, you know, frankly. So whoop, those people went away. The teams we had were kind of like, I don't know what we're really doing here. And, and it, was, it was really, really challenging. We were working through it and then the project oot, stopped. Um, and then they basically got sold to a bigger company. And I don't know what's gonna happen, but I have a feeling, uh, I mean, they've got contracts that have terms on them that are more than the time from when we bought it to now, so they're gonna have to honor those contracts. So they may buy out those contracts, you know, make a settlement with the vendor and say, hey, you know, we got three years left. If we pay you for a certain amount, will you let us out for the rest of this? <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. Um, you know, or they just throw it all in the trash and then the, the um, the strategic who bought them just says, oh yeah, you're gonna use SAP now. Anoint you with SAP. But what about all the other stuff? And eh, it doesn't matter anymore. Jeez. It's crazy. I mean, it is crazy stuff. So the, I think the biggest lesson learned from that one, um, again, thinking back to where different users may be and people are um, on this call, there were indicators and there were things that occurred during that project that we all knew were wrong. Yeah. 
And when you see those, you know, you can always brush up your resume, <laughs> um, but don't abandon ship, especially if you help to select all this stuff. You kind of just yep. for your own honor and your integrity, you got to kind of see it through to the best outcome you can. But the best outcome might be to just stop the whole thing. Yep. And I actually think that was the right thing to do. That, that we got to a point where we just said pause. Um, and um, and then there was this sort of internal reorganization they did on the project, and then boom, they sold the company. So had we continued and spent more and more and more and more and more money, they, they, the return on that wouldn't have been there. And yeah. So long story short, um, there is a reality of sometimes it does just make sense to stop. And I don't want to see that. I always feel like there's a way out of it, but um, you know, the problem never just goes away. You may leave the company. I mean, yeah. even younger, when I was younger in my career and I would leave like a company I was working with, I always felt like I, I was like, okay, I'll write up my hat. Here it is. See you later. Bye. But there's always this thought of like, what is going to happen with the code that I wrote or with the, right. the recommendations that I made? How's that really going to go? So the long story short is think about that. Think about what the long term is. And there is always a solution. There right. always is the right thing to do. But you have to kind of widen your, your, your sphere of knowledge and responsibility sometimes to say, okay, you know, let's go back to the vendor. Um, we did this once recently where we had to go back to the vendor, very fast growing business in the middle of the implementation. It's a different company. Mm -hmm. And we had to say, we bit off more than we could chew. Yeah. It's terrible, 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 terrible. I know the right outcome is going to come there. And I know that's the right thing to do. Um, it's a, it's, it's a really tough situation, but ultimately the one factor that's, that's exactly precisely the kernel that all these other problems start sticking to the one in the middle is the client team doesn't have the time to do their side of the project. So misconceptions, you've seen all this, we've heard all the stories. What else would you add to that? I don't know. There are so many things I think. It's so interesting because any sort of project like this, if there's not buy-in, it's not going to happen. Right. There's not a business case. It's not going to happen. And at the end of the day, timing is everything. And so even if you have somebody who is, if I were to come to you and be like, we need this new marketing software, we need it right now, but we don't have the capacity to do it. And I'm pushing for it and pushing for it and pushing for it. Sometimes, I mean, we've even seen projects where the person who was pushing for it left because they were upset that we, they weren't going to do it at that time. That's right. And there's always that risk. There are always so many things that can ch it completely changes the way that a company operates. It completely changes. It can completely change and change the internal workings of a company. Turnover, all of that stuff. Exactly. There's just too much. This yeah. poor company. I think about this poor client I a know. lot. I know. Well, don't worry because they all had options and they are multi multi millionaires. And yeah, they're good to go. But, but still, like. <laughs> but it's kind of true. Not everybody got that, but but it is it is at the end of the day, software is more about people than it is this nebulous, you know, metaverse code that sits in the, you right. know, matrix or whatever. Um, it really is about the people, and so if you can really look at what's the right thing for the people impacted by the software, the people who paid for the software, even the implementation partners that agreed to implement, and even the software vendors, you know, there's always a solution. There's yep. always a way out. And more often than not, it's, you know, uh, I don't know other better way to say it, but suck it up, buttercup. We gotta, <laughs> we just gotta go. We gotta yes. get this thing in, lower your expectations, you know, grin and bear it and Blah, you know, put aside some of those key projects, other stuff, and let's get through this. But unfortunately and infrequently, there are times where you just have to say, we made a mistake. Yeah. And but here's how we can handle it and what we can do about it. Not just we made a mistake. I'm just going to go work on something else. No, no, no. Made a mistake. Now, how do we elegantly wrap this thing up and put it aside? Much like our call right now. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> How do we how do we just put the project someplace where we all just kind of say that sucked, right. <laughs> but now here's how we're going to handle this and because the people that the reasons why you probably got software in the first place aren't incorrect, right. but if you don't have the the people available, um, 
you can build that up so that then later when you do have the people available, you can do the project and you don't want to like upset the vendor. Like even with this, this, uh, the second to the last one we talked about, one of the assessments that we do in the implementation readiness is did you pay the implementation partner? Cause a lot of times clients, I'm not paying these guys. They didn't, we didn't go live. They I understand, what you asked them to but do. they did what they asked you to do. And, and the, when the answer is yes, it's, it's a little bit like, okay, thank you. Uh, but the, the, the last um, um, option that we talked last scenario, they hadn't, mm. they hadn't paid them. They're like, why would we pay these guys? So, so I actually said, you need to pay them yeah. because they did what you asked them to do. It, it's more on your side. It wasn't a material amount either, but I knew it would make a difference to this partner and help them and just get them out of the way, pay them right. and get them out of the way. Now I can go to another partner who can actually meet the requirements and has experience and blah, 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 blah. So yeah. Ugh. Ugh. So complicated. It's so complicated. But um, the simplicity of it is to leave this in everybody's minds. Um, it, again, is sometimes you have to like, you know, here in Colorado, go up to the mountains on a weekend or whatever, and like just sort of go for a hike, hang out, go flying if that's what you're into, whatever your thing is. And then like exteriorize, get out of the mess, and then just look at this and say, hey, what's the right thing to do for everybody? And right. there's always a solution. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. I was. Do you have any other words of wisdom that you want to leave for anybody who's getting ready to start an implementation? Well, and I mean, unfortunately, probably the people listening to this are in the middle of an impl implementation. Yes. Um, so for those for those cats, um, <laughs> I'd say I'm sorry. I wish you didn't have to go through this. Um, yeah, there is a way out. I've already said that. Um, I mean, what would I? What would? What's like the real nugget here? Um, there's a little bit of a um, to go forward, you have to go back process, yep. right? You do have to look backwards in time to see what were the out points that occurred. And to know the out points, you have to know what the ideal scene is versus what the current scene is to see what was different. Um, we have a ton of stuff on our site that can tell you kind of ideally what you have in place. We have downloads, all that stuff. You can just do that on your own. Um, by the way, it does help us when you guys do download our stuff too, because then you might be getting some more emails for us, but, but download our stuff. That's a good flow you can do back to us for what we're doing here on the calls, to be totally honest with you. But, um, but find those out points and you'll know what they are. Yeah. This isn't like you need some PhD in ERP consulting. Even though my competitors, our competitors say that, <laughs> it's not true, it's pretty straightforward, but you have to be willing to confront it. Right. And once you find those out points, you'll know what they are, that's when the solution becomes easy is when you really understand what the problem is. Fine. Be open and be willing to take responsibility as that's well. That's it. That's exactly it. It might yeah. not even be your decision. Usually it's not. Usually somebody else who made that decision, whoop, they're out, right? So then yep. you inherit it. Yep. All right. <laughs> well, well, that's good. Yeah, this is a heavy, Whew. heavy, heavy. call yeah, <laughs> topic-wise. You know, yes. Take a drink of water. Oh. but. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for joining us for today's call. And please let us know if you have any questions, uh, comments, concerns, anything you'd like to add to the conversation. We always appreciate any interactions that you may have. And you can definitely join the conversation on social media. We always put content out there. and We appreciate any time someone wants to share, comment, interact, because I know a lot of you have your own opinions on this stuff. So be sure to join us for our next webinar, which is scheduled for Thursday, August 15th, how to staff your ERP implementation, where Sean will divulge the secrets to staffing your ERP implementation for success without compromising business as usual. I know this is going to be a big topic. Yes. Sean's over here like, oh yeah, oh, yeah. I can tackle that. Uh, please go to our website, erpadvisorsgroup.com for more details and to register. ERP Advisors Group is one of the country's top independent enterprise software advisory firms. ERP Advisors Group advises mid to large size businesses on selecting and implementing business applications from enterprise resource planning, customer relationship management, human capital management, business intelligence, and other enterprise applications, which equate to millions of dollars in software deals each year across many industries. This has been the ERP Advisor. Thank you again for joining us.